I woke up today and I was hungry. So we have all of the eggs and we are here in the metal shop to test the different types of metal shop tools to see which electricity and material can cook an egg best. So here are the variables of our experiment. We are testing material thickness, thermal conductivity, MIG welding, plasma cutting. We have 72 eggs, a whole lot of heat, and you know, technique. Basically what I'm trying to ask is, join me for breakfast? As you can see, I have a bunch of different thicknesses of material. This is all mild steel. Egg cooking. Getting eggy with it. Um, So I'm gonna be doing a lot of different processes. I'm gonna start with MIG welding. MIG welding is a type of welding that is an electrical process, of course, because we're testing electricity here, and it closes a circuit and with a little welding arc that gets super, super hot. So my plan is I'm going to weld a circle around an egg in the middle of it and see if the material gets hot enough to cook the egg. Let's weld some eggs. Okay. It's gonna be a big welding. In welding, the super hot electrical arc enables you to melt your metal and create welds. But we don't care about that for now because today we are on some is the sidewalk hot enough to cook eggs level of science. I can smell it, oh my god. Right off the bat, my ability to manage the heat on the thin sheet metal while making huge long welds, something you would never do in practice due to the need for proper heat management, was a struggle. I played with my weld settings, changed up my technique, the shift largely being from proper welds to... And so, as you can see, my welds ended up a little creative. <sighs> oh my, I can smell it. it smells as you can also see, my first attempt to cook an egg was pretty lousy. It's not great. So look, so you can see there's spatter, you can see that it started cooking the edge um, and started then burning the edge. I kind of expected that, expected it to go like cook from the edge in. So far, my methods are proving rather ineffective. So I tried it again with butter. Okay. Chaos tornado. And here is where it gets interesting. One might say, here is when I discovered the true purpose of this video. I have to say, it might have been the fumes, but the longer I attempted to cook the perfect egg, the more I realized that this adventure was way deeper than I had originally appreciated. This is, this video is truly the announcement of my new cooking show. That's a dog. See, immersed as I was in the task of creating a high-level culinary experience, it took a fume-induced moment to see a poetic parallel. As I added heat to the metal, it was becoming a liquid. And as I added heat to the eggs, they were becoming a solid. And oh my god, I am transforming the very states of these materials by adding heat to them. We live in a material world. I love materials because they are a bridge between science and design. And as an artist, I find them very grounding because physical materials represent a fundamental shared reality. When matter changes from one physical state to another, this is called a phase change. For example, a liquid to a solid. This chart shows eight different phase changes through four different states of matter. Stainless steel will always melt at 2,750 degrees just as, apparently, an egg will always to become firm at 158 degrees. Wow. This non-negotiable sense of a shared reality is obviously something that is kind of lacking in the world these days. 
And as someone who has a dubious relationship to reality just as a concept in general, and has, self-admittedly, ended up in a metal shop with 72 eggs in the past month, I really lean heavily on material properties to ground me. Here's the truth. When you know how the world around you is constructed, you can deconstruct it and rebuild it as you see fit. That was some footage showing you that I am an aerialist and not a juggler, and in fact, my wonderful stunt double even had to step in for me, although I doubt you noticed it, it was seamless. But that's that, and this here is the iron carbon phase diagram. If you're a nerd, you may just refer to it as the Mona Lisa of materials science. I'm actually gonna come back to this in a moment because first I have to introduce plasma cutting because the welding situation is clearly not working. We gotta up the ante. We're moving on to plasma cutting. Plasma cutting is super awesome. Plasma is actually the fourth state of matter, which just sounds cool. And the way that plasma cutting works is also by closing an electrical circuit, similar to the electric welding processes. So there's some similarities, but whereas with welding, the arc only reaches from 7 to 11,000 degrees, which is incredibly hot, so only is relative. A plasma arc gets up to 36,000 degrees. So as you watch this next attempt, which, spoiler, also isn't really gonna work, kind of, but not gonna lie, the force of the compressed air really threw me and the way that yolk spattered. Let's talk more about material science and metallurgy. What is metallurgy? Metallurgy is basically the science that explores how the structure of materials, often on a microscopic level, affects the properties they exhibit, and therefore how they can be used. So really again, we return to how important it is to understand the fundamental material properties of a given element so that we can tailor and optimize those properties for our desired application. For example, I'm an aerialist, and I know that aluminium will break, as opposed to steel, which will bend. So I only perform on steel rigging because my desired application in that example is to not die. Also, generally. My desired application here was to cook this friggin' egg, but it wasn't working and clearly I couldn't change the metallurgy of the steel I was using, so I figured maybe a deeper understanding of the phase transitions of the egg was in order. We can see here that the egg is exhibiting qualities of both a viscous liquid, a solid, and strangely, a desire to be a chimney. All right, so I know that I said we were only going to be using electricity to cook these eggs, but it's clearly not working. So I figured we would use a time-tested technique of fire. This is an oxyacetylene setup. It only gets to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is a big billowing flame, so an ode to Prometheus. Back to my favorite chart. The iron carbon part of this title refers to steel. Steel, loosely speaking, is made up of mostly iron with varying amounts of carbon. This important diagram is used to understand what structure will be formed at what temperature and at what carbon content. It also describes at what temperature different compositions melt, how much liquid and solid will be present at a given temperature, how much of each structure of phase will be present at a given temperature, and so we can see when a steel will be fully solid. Basically, it tells you a whole lot of stuff and it looks complicated and it is complicated, so really, I just wanna direct your attention towards this one line. The liquidus temperature, which is the temperature at which steel of a given composition fully turns to a liquid. As you can see from the shenanigans happening in the video right now, my experiment wasn't working. And the steel variable in this situation seems pretty locked and loaded, so I figured I would have to create an egg phase diagram. And my gift to the world could perhaps be the solidus ovoid temperature, which, of course, 
would be the temperature at which an egg turns to a solid given a certain set of variables. I felt that there was one last variable for me to test to ensure a comprehensive solidus ovoid temperature chart. And that last variable seemed to clearly come down to my own personal technique. I watched some cooking videos for inspiration and presentation, heat application, and personal flair seemed really to be what everything came down to. <laughs> oh my god, I'm kind of far, far away. Honestly, I've just always wanted to try this. If there was a bar, I would have hung from the top of my feet. So let me know in the comments if you want to see me try and do that while I'm welding. So let me know in the comments if you want to see me try and do that while I'm welding, and maybe I will. Here is my final solidus ovoid temperature chart. I think honestly, given just a few more experiments, I'll be able to bring the same scientific rigor to it as the uh, stick figure Mona Lisa over there. And I'm sure breakfast aficionados will use it far and wide. So there is a lot of eggs and metal and really poor cooking in this video. But as with all types of making and scientific experimentation, I learned more of what this video is truly about by participating in the process of actually doing it and discovering. I'm of course talking about phase changes and matter's ability to transition between physical states. In fact, there is a name for that moment of change. It is called the critical point and it's the point at which two phases of a substance become indistinguishable from one another and for a moment is perfectly half and half. I've also been talking about the reliable nature of the fundamental material realities that give structure to our world and in turn, how we are able to navigate our relationship to it. And to a degree, I am right, but I should temper this statement by recognizing that this capital T truth is only true in a vacuum as most capital T truths often are. The wide lens shows us that even the most fundamental nature of matter is always in relationship to the world around us. A favorite example is water, which boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, but 95 degrees Celsius in Denver, the mile high city. So I guess the takeaway actually is, the next time you find yourself taping on your clothes in a metal shop with 72 eggs, Remember that even the most fundamental material truths always exist in relationship to the world around them, and no reality is complete without context. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and all that jazz. I've been traveling so much recently that I wasn't able to build anything for this video, and really, I just thought it'd be nice to have breakfast together. Oh my god. It's like rubbery.